Memory-keeping journals hold the secrets of an individual's reflections, past events, and creative expressions. May 2023 really speaks to my coping skills around my husband's illness by finding respite at rummage sales and hiking trails. It was my first summer hiking without Sky, and due to my husband's illness, we just weren't going on adventures the way we were used to. August was my butterfly month. I was making great progress with my anxiety with the help of the veterans' mental wellness and caregiver support teams. But then, September came too quickly, and I was dealing with the depression of feeling like summer had just slipped away. Mama Cat and I spent as much time as we could outside. Captured amongst the pages are stories, photos, and keepsakes, collected and bound over months of journals. These memories preserve time, encourage self-reflection, increase feelings of gratitude, and leave a lasting legacy. These are my journals and the covers that bind them. I learned how to stitch bindings when I came across a stack of old doodles and sketches, little scraps that I've been keeping probably since around the 90s. So it was 2018 and I had recently discovered junk journaling. So I took all those papers and I created this handmade junk journal about my life as an artist. I started this particular style of diary journaling in July of 2021. It was the size of the books that got my attention because they were small enough to take hiking with me. I just love the size. It's really cute. It's a three and a half by five inch uh, and it's got a little stitched binding and they came with that leather folio. It was how I started, but by June of next year, they were morphing into their own creative, expressive creatures. It's just that these single signatures just don't have enough pages for me anymore. I was collecting more memories and adding more photos, so each book was holding less time. So these first books are holding several months. See, here's uh, July 26th to October 1st, October 1st to December 25th. But uh, by June of 2022, now they're holding only about two months. And eventually my books will only hold one month. I wanted to keep making my own books because they could grow to meet the demands of my creative self-expression. My binding styles have adapted as I've been exploring the binding process. I wasn't looking for any formal booksmithing skill. I'm still not. I just wanted to give myself the creative freedom to bind any keepsake or creative idea that I might come up with. Plus, I don't see the sense of buying journals when I know how to make them and I'm surrounded by paper in this house. I picked up an old address book from a garage sale and fell in love with the cover design. But it wasn't until I deconstructed it that I discovered how to make better bindings. So I can show you a little bit of the differences in the binding. This is the beginning of this year. It was a custom binding because of the tag, but the signatures are glued into a board and that board is glued to the backing here. You can glue that shut now. 
and protect them. Doesn't matter because they're blank pages, what front, whatever. Whatever. And you can also see I kind of ran out of room on the signatures because I create the book first and the pages are blank and then I fill them. And then I I needed some more pages so I just start gluing them to the end signature which puts stress on the binding now because the cover's not big enough. I was getting so frustrated that I would run out of pages in my signatures that were already bound in a cover. February 15th to March 31st where it looks like I just created a big signature <laughs> and then I know I made a video of this fabric cover and just did like a taco binding. I was blowing out of the book I created. So in May is when I did this new binding and if we jump back here where this is called a tight spine because the signatures are glued to the spine. In comparison, this May journal has a hollow spine because this backing piece is not glued back here. And what that creates is the ability to open this up flat. So you can, we, that can totally open you have more freedom of movement. And this is the bindery, the book bindery that I fell in love with. So all my journals following May now do this hollow spine. All right, so we have four signatures of unequal width, right? So I start off the month with, I think, 15 pages. Uh, but anyway, I went with how many pages? It was the 22nd, 30 days in September, April, June, and November. So we had 31 days in July. So I knew roughly how many days I had left. So I purposely didn't make this one as thick. So I could finish out my days. And I kind of did the same thing with the interstitial day-by-day -day journal and wound up with a few extra pages in the back. My last few books, I actually kept unbound and filled them in while they were unbound until they were done. Then I bound them and created covers for them. But this created another consideration. Now the centerfold artwork was in the way of the thread when I was binding. This is a single signature and since it has a centerfold with the pumpkins, I would rather not uh, put a stitch down the center of here. And it, ha it turns out that this little add-on journaling card that I glued to this page as a fold out, I measured it and the center punch will land at a good spot here. So instead of ruining this, I'm going to punch the holes here. In August, I had a huge breakthrough where I was able to go to a paper crafting expo. When I created that cover, I had the forethought to incorporate pieces of fabric within the cover binding so that I had places to hold pins that I had collected during my time at the expo. And that crazy Olympic worthy lanyard for shopping. <laughs> I made sure to wrap that around the center binding. In September, I wanted to celebrate this new ritual that Mama Cat and I had established by spending a lot of time on the park bench in our front yard together, taking in as much of the summer weather as we could. And with it being September and feeling like I had lost the summer, I really wanted to remember those moments. It just so happened I had a calendar that had this wonderful page of a cat 
napping on a pretty white bench in a garden. But how do you use a 12 inch calendar page on the front of a three and a half inch journal? Easy, take a photo of it and print it out on a four by six photo paper and cut it to the size you need it. Looking at two and a half years worth of my life in this collection of journals causes me to see binding as something more than just a practical application of keeping the pages from falling out of the book. Each of these covers protect my memories. Binding these pages gives me a deep appreciation of the stories of my life held within. Because being able to look back on time that just seems to be flying by really fast, that's priceless. It's eye-opening and it can be a very healing process. In June, I was struggling to find a new routine in my life. I mean, I wasn't hiking with Sky, and my husband wasn't able to leave the house, so I was trying to find a new normal. Days were passing, but I had no idea where they had gone or what I had accomplished. It all became a blur. I started interstitial journeying as a way to collect my thoughts throughout the day. In real time, it was a way to help my already preoccupied mind kind of pull the days together. But now, months or even a year later, it helps me observe my life from outside the chaos. I can see it more objectively and with more compassion. I learn, I grow, Having it as a memory keeper with photos in there draws me back. I want to look. I want to remember. I want to look in there and say, oh yeah, I actually did try to make the best of things. Oh, that's why the summer went so fast. It helps me to remember to smile. Documenting my life in journals has created an additional therapeutic quality as I feel driven to capture what I do on video. Recording my world on video does two things for me. One, it gives me a lens to talk to. Instead of complaining, why don't I have the oomph to do it? Why don't I have the passion to do it? Well, apparently in the mood that I'm in, I don't have the passion to do anything right now. <clears throat> I'm just frustrated and upset. <laughs> So I'm trying to reframe and refocus and distract myself and I have thoughts and they want to be heard and the camera doesn't have an opinion and won't complain or argue. Alone in my studio with my camera running, I can think out loud. So I started saying to myself, tomorrow I'm just going to be happy. My girlfriend asked me, can you will yourself to do that? And I said, I don't know, I'm going to try. When I review the footage of me working, I get fascinated, almost mesmerized while I'm watching my hands work and I can hear the words I'm speaking. It's really a form of active self-therapy. The second therapeutic quality of capturing myself as I create is that it allows me to share in story form my love of art journaling and creative self-expression. I experience some isolation as a caregiver, so being able to share my story through videos helps me feel not so alone. I feel like I'm part of a larger community. I get a lot of joy and knowledge from watching fellow creators on YouTube, so why wouldn't I want to pay that forward? I want to give of myself creatively, leave a legacy. It's a desire deep in my heart, truly, where I feel compelled to share my story. And with the paper crafting industry being over a billion people strong, there's a lot of us to share our stories together and feel like a community. When it comes to memory keeping, I think the only thing I would ever caution you on is over documenting your life. I mean, there were a few times living life was getting in the way of me documenting me living life. I would 
fall behind and then feel committed to having to complete my book. I would lay out everything in date order for the month and have like a two day memory keeping marathon. That wasn't fun. <laughs> That wasn't fun because now I was feeling like I was spending my present moments living in my past. That's why this year I'm trying something new. I'm using happy planner pages so I don't have to worry about binding. And I take time at the end of the week to reflect about the week I just lived while looking forward and planning out the next week. And my goal of being more mindful I'm appreciating this day that I take to sit and reflect back on time I spent with friends, what I've accomplished. I'm only a couple of weeks in, but so far I'm really enjoying it. And it's a light feeling knowing that there's no binding that has to be done at the end of the month. Every week is done and complete before I even start the next week. Within the pages of these handcrafted journals lies a whispered invitation to embrace a creative passion which empowers us to rewrite our own narratives. My continuous journey of chronicling my life through pigments, papers, pens, and lens is testament that every blank page, every scrap of paper and fabric, Every memory weaves resilience, self-discovery, and beauty into the fabric of life. It reminds us to laugh at life. Laugh a lot.